Welcome to ESC TV. My name is Marco Valgimigli. I am an interventional cardiologist working at Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. And I have the privilege today to be joined by Professor Christoph Warenhorst, who is an interventional cardiologist as well as a researcher at the Uppsala Clinical Research Institute. Welcome, Christoph. Thank you, Marco. So you just presented here at ESC 2014 in Barcelona, very exciting data about what we can maybe call a new saga from the SCAR registry. Can you uh, summarize the data for us? Yes, uh, as you know, the SCAR registry offers a unique possibility of post-market surveillance studies, not only for medical devices, but also for medical drugs. Uh, in this study, we studied new generation drug eluting stents and compared those with bare metal stents and old generation stents. And what we show now in contrast to previous results on drug eluting stents, that is that new generation drug eluting stents are associated with as low rates of uh, uh, very late stent thrombosis as bare metal stents. And this is in contrast to old generation drug eluting stents who continue to show higher rates of uh, um, stent thrombosis and very late stent thrombosis. Christoph, these are very exciting data. Also, let me emphasize the fact that even within the first year, you saw lower rate of stent thrombosis with new generation DES as compared to old one as well as bare metal stent. So is it fair if we summarize your data by saying that actually the newer generation DES seems to have a profile about lower stent thrombogenicity towards a bare metal stent? Um, or at least that's similar low uh, association of a similar low stent thrombosis rates as bare metal stents. I think we need to, to remember that probably old generation drug eluting stents, they caused stent thrombosis. And uh, here we at, at least see as, as that they are as good as the bare metal stents. So how confident are you with respect to the adjustment that you probably have to enter into the multivariable model with respect to the propensity of implanting one stent versus the other? Yeah. That is, of course, a very important question, a very good question, because the main problem with registry uh, studies at ours isn't to, to control for the known confounders, but the unknown confounders, or the hidden bias we could have. And the only way to get around that would, of course, be with randomization. But sure. we're still confident with our results. Uh, we adjust for several different uh, variables, and our results are very consistent. Sure. Also, I have to say, your results have been reproduced by, in the setting of randomized studies as well as other registries. So yes. what are the clinical implications of, of actually of this observation? Lower stent thrombosis, does this translate into a lower mortality rate? That's also a very good question. And in this study, we focused on the performance of the stents. So uh, uh, I think performance of stents is very much stent thrombosis. And um, uh, we didn't focus on mortality. But, but a previous study by Giovanna Sarno, a colleague of me, she looked at the STEMI population. And in that population, we had an association with a lower mortality as well as lower stent thrombosis rates. So that's really great. Last word about DAPT. Do you think DAPT could be a confounder in this analysis? That is also a good question. For the first year, of course, we adjusted for this. It is important to know that in Sweden, DAP duration beyond one year is not recommended. And since our main analysis was very late stent thrombosis after one year, uh, that confounding effect would not be present. Well, Christoph, thank you so much for sharing this data with us. It has been really a great presentation, and I really look forward to the new saga from SCAR Sweden. Thank you. Thank you.